Good morning, and welcome to our first worship service of the year 2021. This morning we'll be celebrating the new year, looking forward to our progress in the church and what we are going to do together. And we're also going to celebrate with the sacrament of Holy Communion. So if you have elements at home somewhere, you have some, some juice and crackers, whatever you have, please get them ready as we will be sharing this holy meal in a few moments. But first, let us sing or watch the video for our opening hymn, The First Noel.
Please join me in our call to worship. The prophet announces, all of you will return to God, a great company of saints processing. We praise the Lord for we are God's people. God restores what has been broken. Communities destroyed by conflict, trust betrayed by broken promises, families torn apart by war. The prophet has spoken and the people respond. We praise the Lord for we are God's people. Please join me in our prayer of invocation. Weeping and yet controlled, we have been gathered by your strong, tender arm, O God. You have ransomed us from the terrors too strong to overcome, and you have freed us to flow like living waters upon the earth. Let your spirit flow through this place, that every spiritual blessing might be ours for the receiving and the sharing. Amen. If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But as we confess our sins, God hears us and offers us mercy and pardon. So let us confess as a family of believers, and then in just a moment of silence, bring your personal confessions before God. Let us pray. God, your true light has come into the world, blessing all upon whom it shines. Hope, peace, joy, and love are ours through the incarnate word. And yet we languish, O God. We do not dance your praises. We do not join in merry laughter or holy pleasures. Our mourning is like ash in our mouths, and sorrow chokes the world of our delight. We wish to profess. There is no peace in our hearts. We do not see the promises of the prophets fulfilled. Open us to the blessing that surround us, that we may again be moved to praise you, God of blinding light, gentle power. God's might is inscrutably contained in the vessel of a human baby, and God's grace is unleashed upon a weary, broken world. You too are vessels of God's Spirit, recipients of God's grace, partners in Christ's reconciling work. Be at peace in Christ. You are made whole once more. Alleluia and Amen. <clears throat> Our first scripture lesson this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 31. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, raise shouts for the chief of the nations, proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, gather them from the farthest points of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child, those in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nation, and declare it in the coastlands far away. He who will scatter Israel will scatter him and will keep him as a shepherd of a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion. They shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, the oil, and over the young in the, of the flock and the herd and they shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then the young women shall rejoice in dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give them the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. And our gospel lesson from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. But as come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. 
He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood, or the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Amen. Please join me as we confess our faith together using the ancient Apostles' Creed. I believe in the God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in our next hymn, We Three Kings.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my message be pleasing to you and reflect your will in our lives. Amen. Before I begin, I'd like to share another passage of Scripture which kind of helps us put into perspective God's point of view of time. We have a different point of view. We think of time as very short, very brief. We think in terms of days, months, and years. God thinks in terms of centuries, millennia, epochs. These are the, the differences in how we think. But I think this passage from 2 Peter helps sum it up for us. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved. With the, with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of people ought you be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and in hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found at peace, with, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Two thousand twenty has been quite a year. I don't need to tell anybody that, but I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you decided to skip resolutions for 2021. Why bother? We didn't even get a chance to do our ones from last year. But now, now is the time when we sit back, we look at the future, and we think, what is it we want to do? And I'm sure that because of 2020, your vision of 2021 will be very different. What you want to happen may seem very benign, very normal. Things that we would not have thought we would have to wish for or push or accelerate in our lives just a year ago. But things are different now, and we have to acknowledge that. But maybe you're still looking at those traditional resolutions, like losing a few pounds or building up the bank account, doing something. But what about your journey of faith? What have you done in 2020 that you want to change or improve upon in 2021? Did you reconcile yourself with God during this past year and offer Him greater devotion? I hope we can all take time to do this. 2020 was certainly a time for reflection, a time when things were very difficult for us in many different ways, both physically, spiritually, financially, all of these things came together in a perfect storm that has caused us a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. It's easy to see where we need to change. Some of the changes we want to make might be easy, like you see that little bulge around the middle and you think, well, I could lose a few pounds. That would be easy compared to some of the other challenges we've already faced. So maybe this is the year to do that. The beginning of a new calendar offers us a chance to begin anew on our journey with God. The year is just a number, but it's in our hearts and in our minds where we decide to make a change. When we decide that we want to make ourselves better that we want a new and improved life and journey with God. Most of us pray often. Some pray every day and others pray whenever the mood comes across them. A few pray only when they're in trouble and all other avenues have failed. No matter how often we pray, we expect or even demand that God acts right now. How many of us sent very fervent prayers this past year asking for things to change, for things to happen, and we wanted it right now. We didn't want to wait. We wanted things to be back to normal. We wanted our lives to be safe and secure, free from disease, free from financial peril, free from loneliness. We wanted all of these things, and we wanted them immediately. But they didn't come. 
And they're still waiting in many cases. But God tells us and reminds us to be patient. We are a society of folks who want everything done right away. Instant gratification. If we pledge to lose weight, we want it to happen quickly and easily. If we want something to happen, we want it now. Not tomorrow, not in the distant future, certainly not the sweet by and by. We want God to deliver like Amazon. 24 hours, two days, whatever. That's it. We want it quick. We want it at our door from the moment the words leave our lips. That's how we demand. But it doesn't work that way. Certainly not with God. And certainly we've seen that throughout our lives, but last year especially so. Our scripture lesson reminds us to be patient with God. God does not answer to our timetable. We answer to him. And a thousand years are like one day to God. And if that's the case, then many of our prayers may take a very long time to be answered. Many of our prayers will not be answered in our own lifetimes. And that's very difficult for us to accept and to grasp, for us to understand and for us to accept that God has all of humanity in mind and not just our own selfish desires. This reality leads me to think that we should always be in prayer. We should be patient and carefully temper our requests and promises to those things that will bless our families, the community, the church, and all of humanity. If we put our efforts and our energy into those things, we won't be disappointed. We will indeed reap the rewards and we will see them work out in real time as we bless those around us with God's love and God's mercy. Most resolutions are individual and specific to our own needs. We need to broaden our borders, encompass those around us. And I don't just mean our family and our friends and even our immediate community, but everyone. What can we ask God for that will enrich all of us at one time? Avoid instant gratification. It is tempting for us to want our blessings right now. We ask, we receive. That's how we expect it to be. But we're looking forward to a new year for humanity and the church. And this time, we ask for God's favor and beg for grace and mercy because we can plainly see that the world needs it now as much as ever before in history. We need it, but it doesn't come quickly. And we are the engines that drive it forward with God's help and God's strength. We should pray for peace and harmony in the world. We should pray that people's hearts be open to God's word spoken through Christ. We should pray for a spiritual meal that feeds everyone and not just ourselves. And that's very difficult. When we're in need, we want our needs to be fulfilled. And we forget that those around us are still in need. And I don't mean those people we can see, those ones in our family or the ones across the street, but the people everywhere in the world. Who are suffering. This past year has seen its share of people suffering everywhere. We should remember them in our prayers and in our thoughts and in those actions that we take on behalf of our journey toward God. As we pray for a new year, we also have to be thankful for what we already have. And boy, that can be very difficult. We have to thank God for 2020. We have to thank God for the blessings we've received. Now that may be very difficult for some. Some people are looking back and saying 2020 was anything but a blessing. But if you're watching me right now, you've already lived through it. You've survived. That's something to be thankful for. We're still here, our nation is still here, our communities are still here. There's still a roof over your head, hopefully. Maybe some of you have lost many, many things and it's still hard to find something to be thankful for. But I guarantee if you look and turn your heart toward God, you will find those things to be thankful for. In spite of all the difficulties, there is still hope to be found. If you want blessings in 2021, you have to be thankful for the blessings that you received in 2020, even in the midst of all those difficult times. We should remember God's grace in the last two millennia before demanding God's mercy in the third. 2020 had its good, great, bad, terrible moments. All of these things combined. We have to look at those moments and ask God for help and for love. God has made us a resolution of redemption 
through Jesus Christ. And the day will come when we are gathered into the divine kingdom or scattered to the wind and fire. That day will come as a thief and no calendar has it marked in red. We can't predict it. There's no year attached. We just have to remember to be ready at all times for God's presence. And that helps us to understand that our journey with God is a journey that takes every single day of our lives. Every day is a step. Every moment is a moment we spend with God. So we don't look to jump ahead. We don't look to see what's coming down the road. We just keep walking with our Lord, waiting and hoping and being ready to endure whatever comes our way. We should continue to work for the future of humanity, our family, our friends, our community, the whole world, and most certainly for the church. We all have to do our share of labor as well. There are a great many challenges. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, our churches are closed for in-person worship. That will change, hopefully very soon. But if it doesn't, we will still be the church, no matter if we're here in the building together or scattered in our own homes or across the country or even around the world. We are gathered as the body of Christ, and that's what matters the most. That's where we have our strength and our power from on high. There are new challenges to be faced. We may have to do things very differently from now on. There are some things in our lives which may never go back to normal, whatever that may be or whatever we thought it was. There are some things that will forever be changed, and we have to be ready to roll with that. There's an old saying, you have to roll with the punches, and that's what we have to do. We have to endure what the world throws at us on behalf of God and his kingdom. We have to be the kind of disciples that are light on our feet and ready to serve in whatever new way we have to come up with in order to get the job done. We have to pray together. That's always a good idea. We should pray often, bring all of our concerns before God because in doing so, God pours wisdom over us by the Holy Spirit. We don't always get the answer we want, but we will always receive some answer in some fashion whether it's peace and calm in our hearts or some call to action, whatever it is, it will be there waiting for us. But first, we have to speak. We have to pray. We have to bring our concerns before God so that we understand and come to understand that he hears us and is with us. We gather together to worship God as a family of believers. That's been a real challenge this year, last year and now in this year. It's been a terrible challenge to do. For only a few months, we were worshiping in person. And even then, we had our restrictions. And it may be the same for part of this new year as well. But that doesn't mean that we don't connect as the corporate body of Christ. We worship God by being together in spirit or physically. It doesn't matter. When we unite our prayers and our, lift up our voices to God, he hears us as worship. He hears what we do. Right now, he hears what we are doing as worship. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what we're all thinking, no matter where we are. So we lift up our hearts and we lift up our voices and we turn to God and we say we praise you and glorify you. In that way, we are always worshiping. So we gather together, whether it's on the computer, whether it's on television or the radio, or in the pews in person. We are the body of Christ, and we are here to worship God together. We have to remember that even though we might be separated physically from one another, our true Christian faith is always personal, but it's never private. Private means secret or reserved only for a certain group. The gospel is not stamped top secret. It's not for authorized personnel only. It's not to be boxed up and hidden within the walls of the church or your home or anywhere else for that matter. It's to be shared with all people. We find that very difficult right now, but it is possible. We still have that ability. We still can reach out to those around us. We are called to live and serve God publicly as a community. No one believer is the church by himself. No one holds the secret of God's love. Public and corporate worship is the glue that holds us together. 
And we may be thinking that that we're something we're missing right now, but it isn't. Because God is putting us together, binding us heart to heart when we ask of him, when we want him to do that. We are still together. Even if we can't touch each other with our hand, we can still feel each other in our spirits. And that is a wonderful gift that we've been given, one that we should not forget going forward. Even when we are together physically again, we should always remember that it is the spirit that joins us together and makes us the church, not simply being in the same room. There is power in what God does with us together. We serve together by gathering our blessings. We know that ministry is not cheap and it's not easy and it's not quick to accomplish. Members have to contribute. We have to contribute everything we have, money, hard work, time. We have to contribute our very feelings, our very thoughts. We have to give everything we have in order to complete the great commission we've been given. And that may be a challenge for us, especially when we feel like we're in a time of want, when things aren't happening like they're supposed to. And I know there are many families out there struggling. They don't have jobs. They don't have money to pay the rent and bills and other things. But I can tell you, you can still serve the kingdom of God by reaching out to the neighbors around you with whatever you can do. We still have that ability. All the gifts that we have are from God. And he will ask us to account for the ones we've received. No one wants to go before God and explain why we did so little for his kingdom, for his church. Members are called to add life to the church. And again, this has become a new challenge, and we have to do it in a different way. But we can come up with that way. We can think it. We can think it through, put our minds to it, put our hearts and our spirits into it, and make things new and make things right. The church is more than a building on the corner. This year, this past year, we've really learned that. Maybe for the first time in your life you've learned that. That the church is actually the living body of Jesus Christ. The church is you and me. Not the walls, not the pews, not the woodwork or stained glass windows. That is the building and the place where we meet. But it's not the place where the church lives. The church lives in you and in me. And it makes us powerful because we are stronger than anything that's built with hands. We are the people God has made us to be. We are the heralds of the gospel. God shares the story and the good news of Christ through us. If the gospel is not visible in our society, it's our fault. No one else is to blame. We can't say that there's no way to give it. There's no way to share it. Because even during difficult times, God has helped us find ways to do that. We can reach one another in ways we didn't think possible. Many of you are using Facebook right now or YouTube right now. A year ago or two years ago, you may have thought those were just entertainment things, just a way of keeping track of friends and family members in the minutia of life, celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, that kind of thing. But here we are, using it to gather together to do God's work. That's a really powerful tool that we've learned to accomplish, that we've learned to use for the kingdom and not just for our own minor pursuits, but for something that's really important and really powerful. We are commanded to share the gospel with all the world. And that means all of us, not just the pastors, not just the staff of the church, not just the Sunday school teachers and so forth. All of us are called to share that word to give that message of hope to all of humanity. If we can keep these resolutions, these new ideas close to our heart, we can make 2020 a very powerful year for the church. We can move forward with God's blessings. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our hearts for all the wonderful things you have done. And we ask now that you be with us and guide us, strengthen us for the days that are now to come. As we turn the page on the calendar, may we turn this page on our journey. May we put behind us the difficulties of the past and look forward to the power of the future. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name and the way that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I remind you to please continue sending in your tithes and offerings to the church. And if you're not a member of this church or in Greensburg, please find a, your own place of worship, your own church, and be generous to them. And if you're not a member of any church, please continue to be generous to your friends and neighbors, to those who are in need. There are still so many needs. 2021 will not get rid of that. So please keep those folks in mind. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join with me in our sacrament of Holy Communion. This bread is to us as the body of our Savior Jesus Christ, broken for you and me, broken for our sins, broken to be resurrected. Take and eat in remembrance of him. This cup is to us as the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for the sins of the many, shed for you and me, that we might know God's new covenant, that we might be a part of something powerful, something strong. Take and drink in remembrance of him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for refreshing us at your table. We thank you for giving us the gifts of the Spirit that we have taken into our bodies as we take this bread and wine. We ask that you remind us of the presence of Jesus Christ in us, not just physically, but spiritually and emotionally. We thank you for this gift of your Spirit, and we pray that you continue to pour out over us all those blessings and gifts that come with our discipleship. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I ask you to please join, join me with our closing hymn, Joy to the World.
May the blessings of the new year bring you joy and peace. May God bless you all. Go in peace. Amen.